Hey everyone, welcome back for another update at the Ellen Podcast. Uh, we're gonna get right into the meat and potatoes of everything. Uh, we're here live at Revive Cedar Valley. Um, I always say powerful, but there's no other word to use it. Powerful, spirit-filled, so much. Um, baptisms would not stop, <laughs> literally until the very end. Worship would not stop in the best way possible from literally the kickoff. Everything was just amazing. Everyone was so activated and so engaged, just hungry and desperate to see God move. Um, so we're just going to get right into, uh, we have a good line of people that just want to come and testify. Um, so we're just going to get right into it. Um, so first, just say your name, where you go to church, which is what area of Iowa, like the city and everything, just so we have a reference. Right now when we're in like the Waterloo, Cedar Falls area, um, so at Celebration Church. So go ahead, introduce yourself, and we'll get in some questions. Okay. I'm Courtney Michael, and I'm the worship leader at New Life Church in Rhinebeck, Iowa. I'm Maddie, and I attend here at Celebration Church in Waterloo, Iowa. So I guess I'll s can I start with a question? Of course. So Maddie, today, before even tonight, today was a significant day for you. Today was a huge day for you. Can you just share a little bit as to why today is so significant? I mean, today is a pretty big day because today is my last Sunday that I will be in Waterloo. I'm actually heading out to Hawaii to be a part of Youth with a Mission and be a part of a school called Revival and Reformation mm. to start me on my path becoming a full-time missionary. Wow. And so what, how do you feel this night impacting you? How, how are you perceiving and just interpreting this night being your final night here? And what is God speaking to you? Yeah, so over this past month, there's been like a really heavy attack from the enemy of just like lies and trying to just pull at any strings that he can. And mm. so I've been focusing really hard on just like looking to the Lord and finding my peace and my comfort and like my foundation in the Lord. And so this being one of the last like worship nights I'll have before leaving, like it's just so powerful to come here and be able to just continue to like lay it all down and give it all up. Um, yeah. And just like continue like with that heart posture of everything is yours. I am just like a piece in what you're doing in this world. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then Courtney, this last year, a couple years, has just been a wild ride and roller coaster for you. And I think we've just consistently seen you be, being willing to just worship, bring a sacrifice of praise, just share what this night means to you in the context of your life. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> 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 the last couple years have been a handful in multiple areas of my life. And so even just coming together with Elam, um, and just, I mean, any time, any moment I'm given to, an opportunity I'm given to just engage in worship has been the focus in the center because I know time after time after time of falling at the foot of the cross, no matter what baggage I might be carrying, that I can find that weight lifted and that freedom to be found there. And that's, I mean, that's how I've continued to survive through such yeah. a trialing season. And that's how it is. Amen. I mean, you wor worship with us multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say stands out about about specifically tonight because mm -hmm. you've worshiped with us multiple <laughs> multiple yeah. occasions right um i mean specifically tonight my husband and my son were able to come which was a huge mm. thing because it's it's been a difficult season within our family like our family has endured so much and so instead of just me coming tonight like i have in many other worship events just because of scheduling and being a mom and you know driving and commuting and stuff looking at the back of the the auditorium and seeing my husband with my son's shoulders on top of their worshiping was incredible and you know that energy alone from somebody you love yeah. just poured into me and then we jumped into the final number of just the younger generation just surrendering and it's just this moment of, moment of relief of you know what <laughs> the world isn't as big and you know bad and scary as it feels sometimes but wow. sometimes we just need that humble reminder of just come come yeah. And then Maddie, with this being one of your, well, not one of your, but this being your last Sunday here, what, is there anything on your heart you would just want to share with your church in this city before you go, just in case there's anything maybe you forgot or anything left on your heart? Like, I just want to make sure I say this before I go to where God is leading me. Um, I would just say, give your yes. If you feel call, if you feel a nudge, even the tiniest yes will like push you so much further and push the kingdom so much further. That yes might seem like so little to you, but so big to another person is so big in the kingdom. Yeah. And so I would just say like, give your less. Yes. Don't allow 
the anointing or anything to pass you by. You don't want to be left behind. Mm -hmm. You want to run with everybody. You yeah. want to run with the Lord. And so I would just say, like, give wow. your yes. That's good. It's amazing. Yeah. I, we did this last time. Last final question. Painless as possible. <laughs> You're leaving tonight one word or phrase. You're putting on your wall in your bedroom or kitchen what would that be leaving tonight and you're like wow revive cedar valley did this in my life or revive cedar valley god spoke through me at this event mm. i'll let you get creative with it i'll let you have a few seconds Pressure. <laughs> <laughs> i think the the one word that immediately came to me was just continue mm -hmm. wow. um i mean i feel like that applies to every individual that we see from the platform perspective that I saw tonight, you know, people yeah. struggling with the decision to get baptized or struggling with the decision to even come to the altar. Um, but just that word of continue, continue drawing near, continue pursuing, continue opening your Bible, just continue. Amen. I think my word would probably be security. Yeah. Um, just standing on that firm foundation of the Lord. I mean, like he's holding you in your, his hands. So, wow. yeah, that's awesome. Amen. I well, appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you just so thank much. you for taking some time, leaving late night, <laughs> just to come and share a little bit of your heart, because I know it will impact many. So yeah. just thank yeah. you guys so much, and um, we can't wait to see where God takes you in your next journeys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. We have more. Uh, they're coming. <laughs> and these three actually all got baptized. You can see by the shirts. It says New Creation, 2 Corinthians seven or 5.17. On the back, it has the Elm logo, <laughs> and then John 3.16. Yes. I'll be in the model. <laughs> so it's amazing. Um, it's awesome that you guys are all here together. Um, Shelly and Wesley yep. are, all, um, are all from our church. And, and then I'm Stacia. Stacia. Yes. Awesome. So we're just going to let I've you guys just testify sent. a little bit. You guys were all baptized. Like, what yes. brought you to that decision? Um, and we're just going to see. What God, what God was speaking to you. So, Willie, you want me to go first? Yeah. Start okay. here and we'll just work our way down. Okay. So, this weekend, a friend invited me to a prayer and worship at their house. And I went and I got delivered from all my strongholds, all my generational curses, all of my family strong ties, all of demonic spirits. Like, nine of them. I think it, like, took a long... It felt like it took, like, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we, like... I got delivered from some, and then I went into another room and got delivered from more. And then tonight, I, like, got invited by them same people. I got invited here, mm -hmm. and I also saw it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But I felt led because I am so hungry and so thirsty for Jesus. Yeah. So tonight I came to worship and Holy Spirit nudged me and I said okay let's go and I went and got baptized again because 2019 I got baptized at New Life because God saved my marriage and we read we reunited our life and our marriage in that baptism wow. and then tonight because I've gotten delivered from everything and I got a new fire full, like burning like it's ignited and I, I just I can't I can't contain it so I decided that I was gonna get baptized again mm. so I could like represent the new beginning of a new season and a new part of my journey with Jesus wow that's incredible Amen. sorry if that was too much no <laughs> that's not too much at all please <laughs> share as much as you want yeah <laughs> then Wesley you also got baptized today what was God just putting upon your heart that made you um, take that step well, I noticed the nudge at first, but then a part of me hesitated, so I prayed that he would conquer whatever hesitation, and I would just do it. Yeah. Wow. And he delivered. Wow. What do you feel like he delivered you from today? Self-doubt, problems that I've been dealing with for a while. Mm. He's brought them to light. He's shown me that he's listening, because mm -hmm. sometimes I question whether or not he can actually hear if I'm doing enough, mm. but he can hear it. Yes, and that's real. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And then your mama, also yeah. today. Here at the end. She went before you. Yes. 
go for it. Just a little bit of your um, leading up into your baptism throughout the night, kind of how did it, how did it transpire and manifest itself in a way? Well, um, just be honest. That's okay. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Be honest. Part. Okay. This part we'll get edited. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Give me a. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Absolutely. No pressure. Um, I think what what led up to this night is I love worship. Yeah. And um, so I really wanted to come tonight just because of the worship. Um, I was baptized uh, probably a little over 15 years ago. Mm. And um, since then, we've moved back into my area. And um, we've gone through a lot at our house mm. and in our home. And um, there's generational curses within mm. the house wow. or within within our lives and I I just feel like tonight was deliverance from a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. and um, yeah. so I just wanted to end up the night with a baptism wow. um, I just want to say like your baptism is going to be one of the most memorable ones I've yeah. ever witnessed um, just the yeah. shriek of joy yeah. that came out of you when you came up out of that water, it got me so fired up. <laughs> and I think it got everyone around us who witnessed it so fired up. And yeah. I think that's like, that's what you imagine like a baptism, how, how it's going to turn out. And it was just like, it was just oh. so beautiful. And yeah. I could just tell that, that that cry of joy was just coming. Yeah. It was like shooting up through so much pain and so much difficulty that, like you said, that you've experienced. It's not yeah. that you getting baptized is saying like all, the, all that stuff is gone and all that stuff, it, all the difficulties of life are going to go away, but it's saying like the joy can shoot up through that and the joy of the Lord is greater than all that. And right. it was so amazing to just witness that and then to see your son also take that step and get baptized and, you know, God, as Maddie was saying earlier, um, just that yes and yeah. just listening to that nudge. And like you said, sometimes there's going to be those moments of doubt that, you know, just the questioning, like, oh, does God actually hear me? Does God want me to do this? But when you just say yes, yep. you're going to be amazed to see how God moves through that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hell lost another one. Yeah. Hell lost another say, one. A common thread, I would say, between all of you, because we kind of start when Pastor went up to do a little bit of ministry, he was talking about the generational curses being broken. And I would say amongst all of you, you know, and then that's broken to see all of you guys literally shoot out of the water, see, you know, Shelly kind of like, like literally shriek of joy. Yeah. Um, and then just to see you completely, once again, it's like <laughs> everyone's like shooting out and it's just like, <laughs> not just out of the excitement, but it's like literally you can see the chains just completely being broken, just like a release of it. You know, there's still the healing process, but to literally see God work through all of you to really see that. So just I thank have, you. Oh, yes. I have something to say. Yeah. Please. So, Holy Spirit led me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Holy Spirit led me to tell new beginning relationships yep. or even ones that have been a long time and are starting to like dwindle or lose something. He said to tell you the situations that you have in your life, your family, your brothers, your sisters, your friends or whatever, they're all appetizers to wow. make it so that you get hungry for Jesus. That little salt, that bitter salt feeling that makes it so that we're thirsty, to make it so that we're thirsty for Jesus. He's the water of life, and he's the rock, so he's also our foundation. So remember, you can stand on him, you can embrace his love, but yet you can also make sure that you know he is the meat and the potatoes. He is yeah. the, he's the, the main course. Everything else is just your appetizer. Wow, well, that's very powerful. Uh, Austin's pulling up a verse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just a verse that is coming to my heart right now um, that I think just I want to read off to encourage you guys. Mm -hmm. It says, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And I think 
just hearing some of your stories and just hearing a little bit of, about your testimony and just the things that were going on, going on inside of your hearts, we so often think that to be chosen by God or to be um, of significance in this world or of an influence that we have to um, look like what we see on media, look like the, the strong, the beautiful, the um, well-spoken, the w talented. And it's just like God chooses the simple ones in life. He chooses the ones that are often behind the scenes, the ones that are in secret, the ones that cry out to him yeah. in secret. And um, the amazing thing is, though, that, that then once he does that, he then often makes us strong. <laughs> and we're made yeah. in his image, so we are, we are beautiful. <laughs> and he just, he, he's amazing. And I just wanted to encourage you guys, like, you matter. And his, his word says that his people are a body, and each member is different. But the thing is, when one part of your body suffers, the whole body suffers with it. Amen. When one part is honored, the rest of it is honored with it. So you guys are a part of the body, and it matters, and you're needed. Thank you for that encouragement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we're rejoicing with the body right now, too. Yes. <laughs> so exactly. much rejoicing. Uh, so we're going to have our final question, which we like to do is, what's the word, phrase, or something you're walking away from tonight? You, something that God did or spoke to you. Um, what, what would that be? There's more than one. <laughs> That's okay. <Same. laughs> that heartbeat that they showed on that video. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be leaning in and make him be our heartbeat. Yep. Everything that we think, say, do, lean in. So, in other words, now that I said that, my phrase would be thirst and hunger mm -hmm. for Jesus. Amen. And let him catch you on fire so that your little sparks of <laughs> that little eek yeah. when you come out of the water or that little oh, when you get all excited and you got that stuff bubbling inside. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let that catch someone else on fire. Yeah. Because it only takes a spark. Wow. It only takes a little bit. Wow. Mm. Amen. And some people, I've noticed that some people in our brokenness, in our weak points, they actually feed off of that because then they know they're not the only ones. Mm. And Incredible. that also, I'm sorry, but that's not a phrase. But I'm just saying, like, that yeah. is something that's on my heart. So get hungry, get thirsty, and get caught on fire, and then just let it spread. Wow. Like a wildfire. Awesome. Amazing. Wesley. That's more than one word I know. That's, That's okay. <laughs> That's great. God blessed me with many words. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That is a good blessing. <laughs> uh, I would say that in life you will suffer. Suffering is inevitable. Mm. But I say keep going because there's something at the end of the road. And God gave us this life to enjoy. He doesn't want us to suffer, so mm. enjoy it to its fullest. Don't get discouraged because things get rough. Mm. You go to him when things get rough yes. so that things will get better, and then you can live your life to its fullest. Wow. Oh, man. I love that. That's profound, bro. Wow. I love it. My word is um, freedom. Freedom. And then the song, Get Up Out of the Grave. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Explain, sorry. Yeah. Why that? <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, because I feel like I've been in the grave. Wow. Now you're getting out of it. Yeah. Right. And tonight felt like freedom. Amen. And um, we witnessed that. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for stepping yes. out of your comfort zone and uh, kind of a last minute thing to just yeah. come and talk and share your testimony and to be vulnerable. It's not easy, 100%. Um, but I believe that God's going to use it to impact whoever listens. So Can I say one more thing? Please. You brought one yes. more thing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, do. Please now do. he wants to keep going. I'd That's say, amazing. Uh -huh. yes. I say that God. weakness, it's weak to hide from emotions, mm. from how you feel. Mm. To be strong is to openly admit it and not be ashamed of it. I love that. It makes yeah. me think of that verse that he makes his, he, he makes his strength perfect in our weakness. Yes. Yep. Yes. I was thinking the same thing. Yes. Never oh. be ashamed of your weakness. It's just another part of you. Yes. 
Wow. Thank it's you. no different from anything else that you have to deal with. Just a bit more difficult. It's an amazing Amen. note to end this section on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Yes. Thank you. All right, everyone. We are going to wrap this up with a team member, someone that's been a part of this uh, whole entire family for a while. And we always like to tie in someone from the perspective of the serving team just to get that perspective. And uh, we had Mitch. Um, he always has something to say. The, most, be the best way, like he always is very observant in the way. It's he, very kind of you. <laughs> it is. Uh, he's always observant, should I say. So I know he would have some great observations because he's also serving um, on the, or the worship side of everything too. So he's kind of in the ins and outs. So it's just nice to get that perspective um, mm -hmm. of everything. So Mitch, also just kind of say, well, I said your name, but how long have you been part of the LM Arrival? And then also just go straight into tonight. <laughs> like just the you know you've been here for a while i'll let you say but then just kind of your perspective throughout the night sure thanks colton look th lou i look there yeah. okay yeah, or there okay to you guys yeah i mean i've been with with the team for i think it's 11 years now so where we have passed the decade mark and um i i mean i, I was the first one that sunny sat down at a coffee shop and said hey i have this vision uh, writing songs for the church, and I think it has slowly evolved into a pursuit of revival, and um, that's th from Pastor and Marina's heart, um, and so that's how long I've been. What's the next part of the question? Regarding tonight, kind of, tonight. Like, you know, any observations, anything God was speaking to you just through worship? Can I actually add a little bit to the question? Yeah. So a lot of times, like, for example, we come in yesterday, and we put in hours of setup, <laughs> getting the audio ready, and your mind is so much in a lot of the practical things. And then yes. also, then the band gets here today, and you have to kind of help um, manage them in certain ways and make sure that they're good, make sure the sound is good, make sure everyone's plugged in correctly, yeah. make sure everyone's on the same page with the songs, the tracks, etc. So when you get when you've had a moment in the midst of worship today where you can kind of finally take a breath from all those practical things and you're yeah. kind of fully embracing the moment, what do you what did you observe today? Uh when I I mean I thought today today I mean every single week it's like every single I, I feel every event oh this was like one of the best ones. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like I want to say that this was one of the best ones. Yeah, 100%. Uh, like everybody was um Everybody was so locked in from from just as soon as you open the night, just getting them together, and they, everybody was so like focused, so desiring, hunger, prayer. Um, you know, every once in a while, I'll take out my ears because you hear you're always hearing. I'm for me, I'm always hearing the music, right? So you can't really hear the room, but every once in a while, I'll take out the ears because I want to hear the room, and. Um, and the, you can, the people singing, very loud, very present, um, passionate. Um, so I feel, I feel like every, yeah, every event that we're doing is, it's like peop, the people are locking in. The people are coming with intentionality. They're coming with purpose. They're coming um, with, with the openness to see what happens. Um, so... Those, I mean, those are some thoughts, I guess. And something we, I mean, we usually share this towards the end, but I'll just mention that we're at 52 churches now where we've initiated conversations in regards to return to Jesus. Um, again, if you haven't signed up yet, return to Jesus.info takes two minutes. We'd love to share more info about it with you. Um, but as you know, Mitch, that these revive me's are leading up to a greater gathering that we're praying into, um, which is return to Jesus on July 14th of next year. Um, which is an effort and a prayer that um, it would pretty much be a Sunday service for the entire region. Why do you think something like that is yeah. needed and important for um, the region at this time and for the nation? The first thing that comes to my mind is there's power in the gathering. There's power in the gathering, right? And every pastor or leader will, I mean, they're pursuing kingdom mission. They want to see people changed by the gospel, and um, they want to see the expression of the church in its fullest form. Um, I think those are basic desires of any pastor or leader. Uh, and so, I mean, calling the church together um, as the gathering, um, I think, 
and especially too, I'll just as a quick tangent, like the church is the medi- mediator, right? Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man, but the church is really the mediator between the world and God that we are the body of Christ. Um, and so his body interceding for the community, for the state, for the health of the church, um, and ultimately for the nation. Um, but that, that is a place that we've been called to all of us, the church, right? That's, that's the place that God has mandated for his church to be, to be the intercession, to be the embodiment of Christ, right? Cause he's the mediator between um, God and man. And so I, when we come together and we call the churches together, that's one of the, I mean, we believe in the power of prayer. We believe in the yeah. power of the word. We believe in the power of worship and those things together um, cr- we actually believe that that changes things, right? We're, it's not just like we're getting together, right? We believe that these things actually cause a change. And so that's, I'd say, the importance for any pastor or leader yeah. is we have to kind of what, when the rubber meets the road, you know, put our cards on the table, like yeah. like that this is, I mean, I know that we're, we're meeting every Sunday, the church meets every Sunday, and that's what, what our mission is as a local body. Um, but, but we're not, you know, we, we have to come together to really kind of, um, make a, make a movement in the earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a dent in the ground. Um, so I don't know. Those are some kind of off the cuff thoughts. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Ask, you want to ask him the question you've been asking everyone? Yeah, <laughs> I will. I'll okay. Ask you a question, but the reason why you're sharing that too is just evidence of, um, like tonight's another stepping stone in that, right? Like yeah. you talk about the power of the gathering of people coming together. You know, that's what the po- purpose of Revive Cedar Valley was for this region, for this church itself, for all the churches that were coming. You know, Mitch was talking about just ultimately a desire for people to in- encounter God. You know, we have leaders, we have serve your, people that serve inside a church, we have those that just attend a church. And o- across the board, though, the ultimate desire is just for everyone to experience Jesus yeah. in one way or another. Um, so that's, you know, it's important, you know, cause they said, this is another stepping stone in that ultimate return to Jesus moment next year at seven fourteen twenty twenty four. 2024. That's really good. Uh, so just connecting the dots in that sense. That way, so you guys kind of, you know, fully see the full picture of why we share yeah. that, you know, why do you come next year? Well, this is a stepping stone in that big gathering of yeah. smaller gatherings, if that makes sense. Yep. Uh, but Mitch, uh, last question. Okay. I don't know how simple or difficult you want to make it sure it's up to you everyone has different words and phrases but leaving tonight you had a word phrase something you like to plaque on your wall you know your bedroom wall or the studio Mm -hmm. um you put that on the wall and said revive cedar valley you know this is what god spoke this is what god did whatever that means to you in that sense for tonight one word to describe tonight. tonight specifically revive cedar valley um i mean the first word that comes to my mind is growth that's the first word that comes to my mind. And I think the growth, it's growth based on, even last year it was a powerful event too, powerful night. Yeah. And so this is just the next step and it's a, um, the trajectory is it's really awesome. So yeah, I'd say growth. That is a great word I would use, a very similar word too. <laughs> a lot of growth, you saw testimonies, people growing out of their shells, people growing in their next, you know, you know their next step that they're taking in their walk, growth as a church as a whole, you know, growth on de- many different levels. So. Um, but just thank you so much, Mitch. Thanks, thank you for guys. everything you do. Thank you for being part of this family. Thank you, um, Colton. And just thank you for pulling your weight. You know, and all of us have different things, different assignments, but um, we know when we're all carrying our different roles, it's important. It helps carry out the mission of everything. So, Amen. We appreciate you and just love you so much. Love you too. Love you, bro. All right. That is a wrap on Revive Cedar Valley. Uh, we will be able to share more if more come across, uh, more testimonies. But as you guys can see, uh, many lives touch, many encounters with God. We spoke with Mitch about growth, not just in the sense of um, a church growth, but person growth, mm-hmm. growth in their walks with God. Uh, so just thank you guys for tuning in to another amazing update of what's happening. Um, and we have uh, this weekend, the 29th and the 30th, we're going to be in Des Moines, and then the Saturday we're going to be at a prophetic conference in Rhinebeck, Iowa, and then the 13th and 14th we have Pella, (laughs) which is going to be amazing, an area we kind of haven't fully engaged with yet, um, at least on a gathering perspective, so we're so excited for those things, but Austin, where are we at with our week 10 update regarding 
how many churches are, you know, the discussion of Return to Jesus, and um, also share, what are you excited for? Yes, so, uh, excuse my yawn as you were asking me that question. Um, it's, it's late night, <laughs> but, um, night. yeah, so we are at, as I mentioned, 52 churches now uh, where we have initiated a conversation wow. um, about being part of this gathering on July 14th. And, you know, I think I'm so excited about it because we see throughout, we, first off, we see Jesus say, where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. But then we just see Jesus praying to the Father um, before he was crucified, um, before he was sent to the cross about wanting his people to be one as he and the Father are one because he said yes. through that then the world will believe. And obviously it's on 714 because of Second Chronicles 714. Um, and we just know the promises that will come along with us praying, turning, humbling ourselves, turning from our wicked ways. And so I think that's why it excites me. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, God is going to move in greater ways than we can even imagine. And the way that he'll answer those prayers will be even beyond what we, c we can com imagine. Yeah. Um, I don't think we will have the capacity, the ability to really even see all the ways that God will honor us coming together. Mm -hmm. All I know is it has to just please the Father's heart to see his people coming together, um, putting aside their differences, um, putting aside where they don't see eye to eye so that we can come together and be of one mind. Yes. And I just, I'm so thankful that we have, and I just think lastly, it's just a historical moment. Um, I don't know, um, you know, I can't think of a time or I haven't read about a time in this region where the church has come together in a way like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's been many efforts, a lot of fights for people to come together. But wherever we go against across different cities, we keep on hearing people say, and we've been praying for something like this yeah. for years and decades. And so I just want to thank those of you who've been praying for years and decades and how much of an honor it is to so much to so many, to all of us to yeah. even hear that in some ways we, God has used us to be an answer to your prayers. Yeah. It's just, there's no words for it. And so we're at 52, um, return to Jesus.info. It takes less than two minutes to sign up. And before you close us out, the last thing I'll say is we just want to say thank you to Pastor Jason. If you see this, Pastor Jason of Celebration Church, um, he got his gallbladder taken out just a couple days ago. Um, he was in a hospital, and it's just crazy the timing that we would be here this weekend. Um, and we hope we were able to stand in the gap for you. We hope we were able to serve your church while you're uh, um, healing. And we, we are so thankful for the opportunity. So, Amen. Amen. So let's just pray and seal everything tonight. <laughs> we can keep going, but we'll uh, seal it with a prayer. So Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for Revive Me Cedar Valley. Lord, we thank you for the countless uh, baptisms that went up, the worship, the powerful, just Holy Spirit worship that was lifted up, for the dancing, the singing, Lord, uh, for the generational curses that were broken, Lord. That was such a big theme in this evening is just how you broke so many curses, um, how you are uh, raising up a generation that is so hungry, so desperate to see you move in their lives, in their families' lives, in their, um, in their peers' lives, Lord. So we seal everything tonight in your name, and we just pray that even what was spoken tonight through this episode will just touch the many lives, Lord. I know um, many listen and, you know, they may have never been to a sort of gathering like this, Lord, but I pray that this is just something that speaks to them so powerfully and just say, I desire that too. And I want to, I want to experience it for myself, Lord. So I pray you also connect the right people, um, the ones that you want, um, Lord. So we just pray and seal everything that you've done tonight. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys so much. Hi, this is Austin. And I'm Colton. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ellen Podcast, where we're going to be providing weekly updates about what's happening here at home for church and also about where the church is going. You can also learn more about the Return to Jesus movement, where there is a call on all the churches in the heartland to come together in one place to cry out to Jesus. And we hope you can sign up at returntojesus.info. You can also stay up to date by subscribing to us here on YouTube and giving us a like and follow on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks, guys.